This question to you is on behalf of all of those I represent as a proud and passionate workplace rep at my school. I represent the teachers whose 266 colleagues have been ripped out of the system, causing huge extra amounts of workload, extra duties, tasks and responsibilities, and now extra stress. And I worry very much about the future for our young teachers. The principals and assistant principals, who just recently have shown uh, well documented their extra stress, but dismissed out of hand by the government recently, with no concern shown for them. My students, who now have far less choice of options in their school, I've had two plus teachers taken away from our school. The students whose future choices have been made harder by the ripping out of the pathway plan from underneath them. The parents who I and we are going to be talking to at every function, fair and footy game we can get to, voicing our disgust at. And I quote a parent, they're trashing our kids' schools. My question to you as Minister, and I really am struggling to say Minister for Education at this point in time, has come about due to the high level of dis disdain, anger and my lack of respect for a government and a minister who continually and publicly lies to justify their attack on public education and your broken promise never to sack teachers. A yes or no answer would suffice. Have you stopped lying about teachers refusing to accept the pay freeze? Thanks, Warren. Uh, I understand uh, the passion behind the question and the feedback that you're getting. Uh, look, I'm very committed to public education uh, and I believe I've demonstrated that fact uh, by my conversations I've had with the workforce in public education and it's been a difficult year and it wasn't my choice. Uh, we would have preferred to go down the, the pay freeze option. Uh, we couldn't come to an agreement uh, on that, unfortunately. Now, I haven't lied um, at all, in my view, Warren. Uh, we I had received a question here in August about the pay freeze uh, and it reflected the first feedback I got out in the community. I was at the Don College visiting there uh, with John Thompson and um, a senior educator came up to me and said, look, I, for me the pay freeze is not such a big issue. Uh, the issue is the increments for me, um, not for me, but because uh, that's the freezing of the increments at that time. Um, but I'm worried about the younger teachers um, and the impact those freezing of the increments would have. I listened to that. The debate went on in the upper house with the, the pay freeze legislation. At the end of the day, uh, we agreed uh, to stop the pay freeze on the increments, um, but we had to maintain the level of savings. And so the uh, other option was to not have a 12-month pay freeze and freeze the increments, uh, take the increments off the table and have an 18-month pay freeze. Uh, and to my understanding, an 18-month pay freeze in terms of a voting opportunity for uh, you and the teaching workforce uh, was never uh, formally put on the table. I never refused, and I am part of the union. Um, and when you get on TV and say I did, I find that appalling. Yeah, so, but no one, did I did you do it? Well, we'll have to agree to disagree because, in my view, the 18 month, the 18 month pay freeze is what we had to have to achieve the savings. Uh, so, while I accept that the unions overall um, accepted a 12-month pay freeze and agreed to that at the rally outside Parliament House, whatever the case may have been, uh, my feedback is um, that the 18-month pay freeze was never provided uh, to its members. Can I just clarify, was a formal offer from the government made to the union for an 18-month wage freeze? Well, the offer, well, we say formal, but the offer was there. <laughs> Uh, Ros, absolutely was there. What, what, which negotiating meeting was that on the, uh, on the foot? Well, the Treasurer and the Premier uh, were negotiating on the, the pay freeze uh, with respect to that. There? Well, the Premier and the Treasurer were negotiating uh, that, but there was quite clearly the Government's position in terms of the savings to be made in education was across that 18-month uh, pay freeze. That's the way we would achieve those savings, which would have uh, enabled us uh, to not have to find those 
uh, savings in schools. My name's Gregor Watson. I'm a teacher at Campania District School. I'm a proud AEU member and I am angry. Listening to you on the report on the radio, I listened to radio as I drove home at about 5.30 as I usually do because we do work hard. I was not impressed to hear it. You continually attempt to justify education cuts by accusing the AEU of rejecting your very sensible pay freeze. How can you seriously accuse the AEU of rejecting anything when you refuse repeatedly our requests to negotiate? You refuse the Industrial Commission's strong recommendations to negotiate. You refuse the Legislative Council's request for you to negotiate. You rejected a pay freeze put at the stop work meetings and, the carav and said the caravan has moved on. We did not refuse a pay freeze. We overwhelmingly voted in favour of one, but your government rejected How can you keep lying and saying that we did it? Look, thank you for the question. Uh, I don't want to be repetitive in my answer, uh, except to say that we had to find the savings. It was difficult. Uh, the required savings uh, would have been made with an 18-month a pay freeze offer. Uh, now, I am the AEU, we are the AEU, and when I hear on the media you blaming the AEU for the cuts in schools, I feel as though you're blaming me. Can you commit today to stop blaming the teachers and the support staff for your cuts and admit that it was a broken election promise which you have to take responsibility for? Well, I've never blamed teachers for anything. Uh, I want to get that uh, very clear. Um, I'm a great admirer of teachers and the principals in schools and I've said already um, and acknowledge the challenges. Um, I'm not you know, trying to cover over this. I'm not pretending um, that the savings we've had to make in school uh, haven't resulted in considerable challenges. I've never, never said that. Uh, I've never blamed uh, teachers uh, yes, we've disagreed in terms of the union's approach. Uh, you would agree, disagree with the government's approach. Uh, and it's a shame we couldn't have uh, come to an agreement around uh, the required amount of savings that we had to make uh, to bring uh, the budget back into uh, sustainability. And that's difficult. I'm sorry about that. And I've uh, said sorry about that for a, a number of times. And uh, you know, I take your feedback. Uh, on board, and it's you know Terry and I have spoken about this. He's represented your concerns extremely well, uh, um, but we had to make what are very difficult decisions to bring the budget under control. And if we didn't make those decisions, uh, then de and we didn't bring the budget under to control and into a sustainable footing. Uh, then the impact on education and health, uh, for that matter, down the track uh, would have been far, far worse. Um, you continually refuse to admit that there have been school cuts, but at my school we've had cuts to support programs for our most disengaged and our most severely disadvantaged students. There have been cuts to primary garden program. We've had cuts to much needed IT support staff and TAs in the classroom for support of students and of course our pathway planners. How in all good conscience can you tell us that there have been no school cuts? Thank you Lucy and I remember you at the St Mary's and we are proudly wearing the green Gonski t-shirt and I respect that and good on you. Um, and I had an opportunity to talk about the garden program as well. Look. Uh, the savings in school uh, had to be made. Uh, schools themselves made the decisions on where best to make those savings as they should uh, and have that autonomy. And some schools chose areas uh, that would that at least impact on the staff and the students at the time. But of course, uh, all savings of have impacted. I'm not denying this hasn't been savings had to be required in, in schools um, as a result of the budget. 
Gonski funding is meant to be additional funding to address underinvestment in our schools, especially for our most disadvantaged kids. Yet, your government is delivering less, uh, around 30 cents in every Gonski dollar through the school gate. I, how is that not a massive breach of faith with every Tasmanian student? It's just, it's not right. Yeah. Thanks for the question. Look, we're doing further work on exactly um, around that 30% figure. Uh, now, the Gonski Agreement was signed by the previous government. We've stuck to exactly the same principles as we haven't altered that at all. Uh, now, this figure's been quoted to me through my discussions with Ros and Terry around, you know, 100% going through the school gate in South Australia. 70% uh, um, in New South Wales. You're saying 30%. I'm, I'm not disputing that um, necessarily in terms of the figures that's been presented uh, to you. Uh, what I am endeavouring to do, and I've made that commitment to Terry, uh, is that we'll get a lot more transparency around exactly uh, those figures so we can make a very proper comparison between New South Wales, South Australia, other states uh, and Tasmania. Now, my view is uh, when you make that comparison, then the, the comparison would even out. Um, but we are very committed to Gonski. We're committed to the five years five and six. Uh, I'm proud of that. Uh, and if you're looking across the ditch to Victoria, for example, under the Labor government, um, they haven't committed to years five and six, so I'm proud the Liberal government uh, most certainly has. But, but we'll, we'll find we'll get the transparency uh, around those figures. So I do want to inform the community and your members uh, far better in terms of uh, where that Gonski funding is directly flowing through do you have to. A timeline when, that might, when we might have a real comparison? Well, I would hope that. Uh, I haven't got an exact time frame, um, but I'm assuming I'll be here next August, I hope, <laughs> um, and um, be able to present. <coughs> Jeremy, I'm Prue Besima from East Alveston Primary School. You're saying that the heavy lifting has been done and that you will be reinvesting into schools. <coughs> My question to you is, um, will you reverse the cuts? Will you return what the schools have lost? And um, put back those programs that we've had to cut in the last 12 months. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks, Prue. I know it's been a strong focus of the AU to reverse the cuts and put the, um, re-establish the uh, resources in schools. Uh, look, the heavy lifting has been done, we're consolidating, and now we'll rebuild. Um, and. I don't want this to sound like a cop-out, which it is, <laughs> um, but the 28th of May is the budget, um, and I, I just can't give you any indication of that at this point in time, but I'll take your question as a strong message. Yes. Um, Mira Jackic from Queechy High School. Yes. Um, in relation to the, the staff that have disappeared, we've lost something like two teachers, but it's having teach or having taught in a practical area where safety is a big concern, which means our class sizes have gone up and I have a class of 28 in a MDT area. Uh, I'm not the only teacher in that situation, but also in terms of the uh, non-modernisation of, of schools, is there any sort of thought to the future to make these areas safer for students, not only in terms of numbers, but in terms of, I suppose, the equipment? Infrastructure? And, yeah. yeah. Uh, yes, there is some thought to that um, and uh, <laughs> uh, well yes um, <laughs> in your lifetime I hope <laughs> um, very much uh, you say um, there hasn't been any cuts in reply to Lucy's question you blame the, the principals for the reduction of programs because they had to choose the principals only money is from their SRP oh. now the Abbott government gave the Hodgman government 20 million dollars of $19.8 million to be handed on to the schools, specifically to go to the SRPs. The Hodgman government chose to only pass on $3.8 million of that $19.8 to go into SRPs. You chose to spend $16 million on 
special high schools, seven and a half on the K to 12, three million on workforce development. This is money that you should be spending anyway, not using the 20 million from Abbott. So my question is, you can't change this now, but next year, I, I might be slightly off the numbers, but Hodge, uh, Abbott will give us $31 million to our state. How much of that is actually gonna go into the SRPs so the principals can make the decisions yes. instead of being blamed for decisions that they can't make because they don't have the money? Yeah. Well, can I just repeat that I'm not blaming principals. I've said that uh, I've acknowledged the challenge that principals have had uh, to make and they, in consultation with their staff and associations, and they've had to make some difficult choices. Uh, I'm not blaming them for the choices that they've made. Uh, I'm taking responsibility for the fact that they've had to make those choices. I'm not, I'm not uh, denying that at all. Uh, in terms of those figures, uh, I could check those. I'll take you at, at face value. Uh, but I want to repeat the fact um, that the previous government signed up to uh, the Gonski Agreement. Uh, we haven't altered in the way that uh, to the principles of that agreement, um, workforce development. Uh, it was a key part of uh, the Gonski Agreement as well. And I know there's been some discussion around should the workforce um, development um, program, which is around $4.2 million, uh, should that not be going to that and should be going straight into schools. Uh, my view is we need to invest in upskilling our educators. Uh, and Gonski said that, uh, and that's what we're doing. Um, but in terms of the $31 million, uh, we will always be open and transparent about that, where that's going, and I want to improve that transparency. So you'll be able to keep me accountable to that.